So good morning. We are getting started um, in unit three, and it's all about managing your money. And we're going to learn lots of different areas of managing our money. This unit, it's probably my favorite unit just because I think it's some one that's going to pertain to your real life. Whether or not you use math in your career, it is going to pertain to your real personal life, which I think is a great thing. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to switch things up a little bit. So those that are watching at home, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Um, so what I'm going to try to do this for uh, three, two, is if you can watch my YouTube video. So I'm going to show you uh, where that is. It's at the top of the link in our class. I'll, I'll show you in just a minute because I have to log into the system. Um, but we're going to um, watch my YouTube video for three, two and fill out the course back. So when you start watching this video for my live class, my live class is going to be working on the worksheets. And so I'll record what questions everybody has and I'm going to work through them with everyone and answer questions. Um, we're also going to spend some live class next Tuesday going through the unit three project. And if my live people enjoy that or that works for them, we'll continue doing it that way. Um, my people that are watching the videos they're probably watching my YouTube videos anyway, but I wanted to let everyone know that um, the class video next week will be us working on the 3-2 worksheet. So we're going back to this idea of interest uh, because in unit 2-1, we introduced the concept of simple interest and compound interest. Um, so interest in general is a fee paid for the use of money. And so when we put money in our savings account, the bank is paying us a fee to borrow our money. When we borrow money from the bank, we pay them a fee and we call that interest. Um, and then we talked in unit two one about simple interest is um, a percentage of the original amount of money. And then compound interest is a percentage of an original amount as well as a percentage of the new amount. So um, the simple interest is an adding, we're adding the same amount every time and compound interest is we're multiplying the same amount every time. And that was kind of the answer I was looking for talking about some kind of an adding and multiplication um, on the midterm. So let's look at question number one. So let's say you get $600 tax refund, you wisely invest it into an investment that pays 5% in interest each year, simple interest. How much money would that add to the account each year? Um, remember with simple interest, a certain percentage of an original amount is added to the account. So I'll let you look on that one for a moment. So what do we get if we just get that 5% one time? Um, $30. $30, okay. Now, you might've written down how you did that, but that's what they're asking us to do on question number two. It says write out the multiplication you did to get your answer in question number one. The next goal is to write a general formula for computing the amount of interest. Get Substitute the letter P for the original amount invested and the letter R for the percentage you multiplied by. So I found um, we took 600 and we multiplied by 0.05 and that's how we got the $30. So we're gonna call this P and we're gonna call this R. And they didn't say this, but we're gonna call the interest I. So we're gonna use these letters P, R and I for now. Okay. 
And also remember that your interest is always written in a decimal form. So going down to number three, so it says fill in the following table, which shows the growth of the account over several years, as well as the total amount of interest earned. You'll need a correct answer to question one, which everybody should have got $30. So each year you're gaining $30. Um, and it's simple interest. So remember, this count here is the total interest earned after one, two, three, four, five, and 10 years. So it skips. And then this is the total value in the account after those years. So I'm going to let everybody get working here on that. Whoops. Okay, so the first year we said we had $30. And when we add that to the original 600, we have 630. And then we want the total interest after two years. So that would be two of the 30s, right? So a total interest of 60. So from the beginning, we had 600 plus our total interest should be 660. Everybody live with me on that? So you have, um, you could be original, you could be going from 630 and just add the next 30 to get to 660. That's one way you can do it too. Um, and then the next year we had three of the 30s, right? From the three years, and we only get $30 every year. So we had a total interest of 90. And now my total account should be 690. Then my... Um, Next year should be, um, my next year should be 120 in interest and 720, and then 150 and 750. And then what should my last year be? Um. 300 for the interest okay. and then 900 total. Okay. So three times 30, sorry, 10 times 30. Okay. So it says, look carefully at the first and second columns of your table. What is the relationship between the number of years that have passed and the total interest earned? So I kind of wrote it out like that for every year that had passed, that was a multiple of 30 that was in our account. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next little section. So the next section was we're going to kind of use the idea of the amount we invest, the interest rate we're getting, um, along with time. So interest, again, is the fee charged for the use of money. Principal is the amount of money borrowed or put into a savings or invested. Sometimes you'll see the word invested. That means it's the principal. Um, the rate is a percent. Um, paid to borrow it or loan it, and it's always in decimal form. Time um, in, <clears throat> or the term is the length of time that the money is borrowed or invested, and it is always given in years. So this is important. And then the future value, A, is going to be the letter, is the amount of the loan or the investment plus the interest paid or earned. So in this next one, it says, we have that $600 we invested, 5% interest, and the rate is 0 0.05. And so go through and answer one, two, and then three. Here. So question one is asking us to write a formula for interest um, using the concept that we had here on page 256 of the P and the R, but adding in time. So we had the principal times the interest times time. Did everybody get that? Yeah. And then number two says the total value of the account after two years is calculated by adding the total amount of interest in the principal. Use the formula you just wrote above to write a formula for the total value in terms of P, R, and T. Remember, we're using letter A to represent the ending amount and calling it the future value. So we want to um, 
formula to represent this value here. And this value here is the principal original right plus the interest. So we can rewrite principal plus interest using all P, R, and T. So we can say the principal plus the interest can be written as P, R, T. Um, use your formula here to find the future value of the original $600 investment. Anybody get that? And I always write out what things I've been given. So we had P was 600, the rate was 0.05, and time, they said, was 30 years. So if we left it for 30 years, what would we have in our account? We had 600 plus 600 times 0 0.05 times 30 years. Um, I got 1,500. Okay. So the interest part was 900. Carter, are you, are you in agreement with 1,500? Yeah. So 1500. Okay. So that's kind of, that's one way we can do future value is just taking the principal plus the interest. And we know that this little, if sometimes they'll say you earned $75 in interest. So you can just add that to your principal, but sometimes we have to calculate the interest using the PRT. Okay. Moving to question four. This one is a little bit of an algebra piece that I'm going to kind of walk you through. It says the right side of your answer to question two this part should be a sum, meaning that it has two terms. Use some algebra to rewrite the following so that it has just one term. The, the result should look like the principal P times some quantity. Okay. So we can write this, this right here as P times a one. Any number by itself is always times one. You just don't ever write the one because it's not necessary, but we're going to write it so it has a placeholder today. Okay, so there's our two terms. Um, terms are, are letters or numbers being added together. So we can see that the two terms share something in common. Does anybody know what they share? A P. A P. So if I can say they share a P, so I'm going to bring a P out in front. And it looks like a P has been um, kind of distributed to the one and the R and the T. So we're going to say, okay, so this P is really being multiplied by one plus an R T. So now it's one term because there's this, this P being multiplied by this uh, expression. So it's just one term because there's um, there's two terms inside here, but it's really one term. Um, so you can still do it just like we did up here. Or now you can use this formula, which becomes a little bit more efficient if you want. Um, and those are written down here in the purple. So the formulas we've learned so far, which you might want to put a sticky note or a star here for your note sheet for the final. I know it seems weird to start thinking about that, but it's only like seven weeks away. Um, and we've got a lot of fun things going on and in between there we've got Halloween, Thanksgiving, and you know, and all the holiday season. So, um, so the one formula is interest equals PRT. And then the future value can be done in a three different ways actually. So we can say future value is either principal plus interest if you know the interest or it's principal times one plus rate times time, which we learned up here, or you can use the one that we actually derived on the other side, which is just principal plus principal times rate times time. Any of those work. So 
I'm going to let y'all work on number five for a moment. I'm going to leave you guys ready to check it out. So it says, to meet payroll during the down period, United Ceramics has needed to borrow this $2,000 at 4% simple interest for three months. Without doing any calculations, make an educated guess as to how much interest you think would be due. So did anybody make a guess? Um, I guess 2,400. 2,400. Okay, Carter, do you have a guess? Oh, no. I guess 800. I didn't hear what, if Carter had a guess, I didn't hear you. Oh, how much interest? I see. I just guessed the full amount. It's all right. Four. You said what? Four or 400? 400. Okay, Carter guessed 400. Okay. The one thing we, I think we need to pay attention to is three months. I guessed 800, I just took four times 2000 and moved a decimal, but I didn't really do anything with it. So let's look at number five or six here. It says now, oops, sorry. Now use formulas to find the interest paid and the future value at the end of three months. How many years does three months correspond to? Oh yeah, because our interest formula is PRT, right? And then our future value is P plus I once we know it. Um, and so because T is in years, T is years. So we have to put three months into years. So three months times one year over 12 months, right? Is three over 12 or one fourth. Or we can use 0.25. Mm -hmm. So I is, they said the, where did we just write it down? 2000. And the rate was 0.04. But now for years, we have to put 0.25 because it's only a quarter of a year. So I'm going to pull up my Desmos. So go ahead and calculate that now. Let me get my Desmos here for myself. So 200 times 0.04 times, oops, times 0.25. What did everybody get? Um, that was 2,000. 2,000 times 0.04 times 0.25. What was the interest everybody got? Uh, I got 20. I got $20 too. Thumbs up on that, Carter, on the 20. Yeah, I've got 20. Okay. And then um, it says we need to know the uh, future value. So that means we can take our 2000 plus the 20 bucks that we earned in three months. Doesn't seem like much, does it? I mean, three months, I only earned 20 bucks on 2000, but oh well. So my future value is 2020, 2020, what a year. Mm -hmm. Are you with me on that one? Okay, so solved example one, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to read through solved example one. <clears throat> if you want, it basically goes through and does something similar <clears throat> with what we did here with the three months but it's one and a half years. So one and a half years is gonna be a 1.5 is the only difference there. Um, and then it solved example two, I would like everybody to read through um, on their own. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. So 
So if I'm missing any of the pieces on the right side of the formula, P, R, and T, because they're being multiplied together to undo them, we're going to use division. <clears throat> so in the solved example, they were missing P. So to get P alone, I would have left P on the right just so it visually looked the same. So to get P alone, we're going to divide by the things that are being multiplied by P. <clears throat> <clears throat> so just like let's say we said we have a number 15 and we know that there's a number that can multiply by five to get to 15 right so it's like oh there's a number multiplied by five to get to 15 well i know five, 15 divided by five right equals three so that's essentially what we're doing over here. There's a number P multiplied by these two numbers that gets me to 9350. <clears throat> so I'm going to divide by those numbers to figure out what P is. So let's look at 3, 1, question 1 and 260. Um, <clears throat> comes out of nowhere, sorry. It says after receiving an inheritance, woo! A newly married couple invested $15,250 for 10 years and received $9,150 in simple interest. What was the rate that the investment paid? Use the framework from solved example two, so the framework that we did up here, and show all of your work. Write your answer in the form of a sentence. <clears throat> so they used I equals PRT. I'm going to off to the side here, write what we've been given. So do we know I? Uh, yeah, it's the 9,150. Okay, 9150. And the principal is by that word invested. So that's how we know that's the principal, 15,250. And they told us, oh, we don't have a rate because it says what was the rate, right? So the rate is my question mark. And then the time is they said they let it sit there for 10 years. <clears throat> so I'm going to fill in what I know. So I've got 9150 equals 15250. R is missing, and then I have 10. So notice that I filled in exactly in the same like the same um, spot, even the same position as PRT, just so that I could, if I went back and used this to help me on worksheets or something else, I've got a good reference of exactly what I did. Okay, now, if I'm gonna follow what they did up here, <clears throat> you can do two things. You could either divide by these individually, or you can multiply them first. So some of you, if you're like, oh yeah, I kind of remember this from algebra, we're gonna multiply these first and then divide, that's fine. I'm gonna follow exactly what we did in example two. So example two took the I and divided by the P and then the times the T to get R. So now in Desmos, to make sure I'm doing this right, it should look just like this in Desmos. And I'm gonna share my Desmos screen so y'all can see. So in Desmos, I'm going to just do 9150 and hit divide. So I'm already in the denominator. And then I can say 15,250 times 10. <clears throat> so if the times 10 is out to the side, you know it's not set up correct. It should look just like it does on our paper. And we got 0 0.06, which is really multiplied by 100 is 6% interest. <clears throat> So in a sentence, we could say the couple earned a 6% interest rate on their $15,250 over 10 years. <clears throat> that would be a good sentence. Any questions so far? 
You're doing awesome. So let's take the show on the road here and look at number two. <coughs> It says if that couple had been able to find an investment that paid 9%, whoa, that's amazing. Um, how much more quickly would they have made that 9,150 in simple interest? Use the framework from solve example two and show all of your work, write your answer in the form of a sentence. So, so I'm gonna let you work for just a minute here. Anybody want to share? Anybody willing to share how they did too? Uh, yeah, I can. Okay. So, uh, I didn't write the letters down first, but I just wrote uh, nine thousand one hundred fifty. Okay, so so I'm just gonna do this. So, under what did you write the nine thousand one hundred fifty? Uh, under I. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> and then I'll let you write those out. Okay, I'm ready. Um, and then I did equals the fifteen two fifty. Mm -hmm. Times the um interest or the interest rate, which is um nine percent, okay. and then times t. Okay, got it. Because T is what we don't know. Now they didn't specifically say what is the years, right? Where did they kind of give us a hint that we needed to find years? They asked uh, how much more quickly would they have made it? Okay, so how much more quickly? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so then where do we go from there? Then um I divided the 15,250 times the 0 0.09 um, divided by the 9150. So you took this and divided by 9150? Yeah. Or you took 9150 and divided by that? 9150 and divided by that, yeah. Okay. I know it's it's hard because what you do and how we say it sometimes get mixed up, right? So right, yeah. We're gonna take we're gonna take the left that's all by himself. So we're gonna say eyes in. 9150 is independent. He's not attached to anything. So the independent, this guy over here is going to say, I'm bringing you up to the other side. Okay, so Stephen said he divided by this thing. And if you all at home like this thing being multiplied first, you can do that. Okay. Okay, so what does that give us? Let's just go to, um, well, I'll let you all tell me. What did you get, Stephen? Um, I got 6.6 .6 repeating, so I just put 6.67. Yeah, I did too, actually. Okay, so is our answer 6.67 years? Because it says how much more quickly? No, then you have to um, subtract it from 10. Okay. Or 10 subtracted from that. So, yep. Yeah, so, they want us to compare it to the 10 years that it took over here on number one. And so, 10 minus 6.67 is 3.33 years. So, let's write that in a sentence, right? So, if they earned a 9% interest rate, they would get to the 9,150 in interest. 3.3 years quicker. Okay. 
Okay. So we're going to take that on the road to number three. So if you look at it a certain way, simple interest in a savings account doesn't seem terribly fair. Remember, interest is the fee charged for using someone's money. So when you put money into the bank, into your account, the bank is borrowing your money and paying you interest. And if you look into a savings account, their interest rates are horrible. Not good, not good. But when you keep that money in the account for a long time, things start to go bad. That's that. Let's say that you invest a thousand into a simple interest account at 3% interest per year. Then according to the simple interest formula, after one year, you would have earned a thousand times 0.03 times the one year, so $30. Woohoo, don't spend that all in one spot real quick. Um, so the next year though, you're gonna have start with 1,030, but you still only get $30 in interest because you only get 30, the money based on the original investment. So number three says, forget about the original amount and just think of the 1,030 in your account at the end of year one as a new investment. If you get $30 in interest over the next year, what percentage did you actually get? Hmm. So you might have a natural way of getting to this, um, but we could also kind of use our interest equals PRT because that works too. So um, our interest, is $30, but we're starting with 1,030 and we wanna know what interest rate are we actually getting and it's just for one year. So you might've already naturally said, oh, yeah, um, the interest is just 30 out of 130, right? The portion of interest, the amount of interest divided by the money we started with, because it's only one year is our rate. And what did everybody get for that? Um. I got 0 0.029. Okay. So point zero zero point zero two nine. Now don't round that up because if we round it up, then it's like, oh yeah, we got the 3%. But really we didn't. We really got 2.9%. So just short of the 3%, right? Now, just to show you, if we did it again, we're gonna to go to the next page and we're gonna see what's going on here. So number four says, if you'd actually been paid the full 3% on your 1,030 in the second year, how much more interest would you have earned? How much more interest? So we need to find out the interest and figure out how much more. So we started with the 1,060, right? I'm sorry, the 1,030. And if we earn the full 3% for that one year, we would have earned anybody get 30, $90, $30.90? Yeah. So first year minus second year. So the first year we earn, actually it's second, uh, second year minus first year, right? So second year we earn 30, 90, and the first year we earn 30. So we would have earned 90 cents more if we got paid the full 3%, but we didn't. We got ripped off. Now, it doesn't seem like a big deal for year one to year two, right? And maybe even year two to year three. But if you're talking like 30 years down the road, that's a big deal if you left all that money in there because all of the interest that you're earning every year, you're just leaving that in there and you're not getting any benefit. You're only getting a benefit on the original thousand. So number five says, following up on question six, how much interest would you earn in the third year if you get 3% on the new amount again? Okay, 
So remember, we're only, we're only earning interest for one year, but it's on the new amount. So <clears throat> let's just write new amount after year two. So we know what our new investment is. So we had year one amount plus year two interest, which we said was 3090. So this is our new P <clears throat> to find the third year's interest. So interest third year is gonna be the principal of 1060.90 times 0 0.03 times just one year at a time. So some of you might be thinking, well, why aren't we multiplying? It's kind of a compound interest thing, but we're building up to the compound interest thing that we got to in unit one. So we're just kind of getting there because lesson three, two is full on compound interest. So just wait for it here. Okay. So the interest, if we really had been earning 30, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 3% every year, we would be getting 3% on this 1060.90 cents. And we would have earned 3183 because you'd round it appropriately in interest your third year. So instead of the 30, we would have earned 3183. So in that third year, it's a dollar 83 more plus the 90 cents more you should have earned in year two. So you can see what's going on here. Um, it says, we'll take up this discussion in the next lesson. For now, refer back to these questions when answering the first question in the looking ahead section of the portfolio. So, we're going to go ahead to, what did they say, to page 265, and we're going to do the extension problems, problems one through nine. There we are. <clears throat> okay. So it says some of the most common and most dangerous examples of simple interest are short-term payday loans, which some lenders also call cash advances. This is not to be confused with a cash advance on a credit card. So before we do this, anybody that has ever gone to like get your taxes done, and it might be a little bit different now because everybody gets their taxes back pretty quickly. But you can go to like H&R Block and get your taxes done and they'll say, oh, it's you're going to get your refund in like 10 days or two weeks or whatever. But if you pay us a small fee, you can get your refund tomorrow. And then when your refund comes, you know, we get the money because we're giving you the money tomorrow, but you're paying us a small fee. Well, the small fee might be like $30, but you're only borrowing it for like 10 days. So <clears throat> and actually the fee sometimes is more than that. <clears throat> so um, it's important to think about those things. So we're going to see that in this example here. It says, let's say that you're going to get paid in 10 days and you need some cash for a car repair now. A payday lender might lend you $350 now and you'll be asked to pay them back when your paycheck comes. Of course, you'll have to pay interest. <clears throat> the median fee charged by these types of lenders is about $15 for every $15 or for every $100 borrowed. Okay. So how much would you have to pay back in 10 days? And then what is the personal, what is the percent interest you're charged? So I'm gonna let you work on this for just a minute here. Oh, you're muted. Sorry about that. <clears throat> How much would we have to pay back in 10 days? We borrowed 350. <clears throat> Excuse me. What would we have to pay back? Let's see. Well, we have to pay the 350, right? plus whatever the fee is. <clears throat> so how can we figure out how much that fee is? 
I'm thinking we could do, if we think about this as borrowed, 350 is borrowed, and they said for every 100 borrowed, we can think about this as a unit changed, <clears throat> borrowed for borrowed, so I'm changing borrowed for fee. So the $15 fee. So for every 100 borrowed, you have a $15 fee. And so I can cancel out my borrows and go to Desmos. And so <clears throat> I can do 350 times um, 15 divided by 100. Okay, so that looks like I'm going to pay $52.50 to borrow that. What do y'all think? So, so even if you don't borrow like another hundred and it's just 50, you just do like half of that. So 1250 or whatever, not 1250, but whatever it is. I'll say that again. So like for, uh, cause it's $15 for every 100 borrowed. Mm -hmm. If you just have the 50, are you still like, are they going to charge you like whatever like seven mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah so for the the three hundreds you're gonna pay 15 15 15 so that would be 45 and then that 50 which is half of another hundred you're gonna pay half of that 15 dollars so another 750 okay yep so that's where they get the 5250 yeah they're not they're not giving any oh it was only half of another hundred so we won't charge you nope <laughs> <clears throat> That's a good question. So, <clears throat> 40250 is what we're totally going to have to pay back, right? So, it says, what is the percent interest you're charged? Mm. So, that would be our fee, right? Out of what we borrowed. So the percent interest is the fee out of what we borrow was just 350. And <clears throat> that is 52.50 divided by 350 is 15%. to borrow now the way we looked at this is we kind of thought of this as based on what time frame <clears throat> because we didn't really take into account time did we we kind of just assumed it was just one year but did we really only them we only borrowed it for how long though just for 10 days oh this might be a lot of a fee we borrowed <clears throat> we paid 52.50 just to borrow it for 10 days um 52.50 out of my 350 is like a seventh of my cost right of what i paid to you know fix my car okay <clears throat> it says maybe that interest rate doesn't sound crazy high to you but remember the length of the loan is only 10 days let's see if we can figure out just how much interest they're actually charging so 15 percent seems high but it's actually really higher so it says what do you need to multiply 10 by to turn into it into 365 so we can do this but um there's another way we can think about this is um I'm going to figure out what I what can I multiply 10 by to get to 365. So if we take 365 and divide by 10, should get 36.5. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> now number four says, if you want to figure out the annual percentage that corresponds to the percentage you found in question two over 10 days, you'd need to multiply by the same number that turns 10 into 365. Oh gosh, so 3650, we're gonna multiply times the <clears throat> wow. So thirty six fifty times the fifteen percent is five hundred and forty seven point five percent. Yikes. That's crazy. <clears throat> now, there's another way you could have done this. You could have said, oh, my um, interest is, if you looked at it as PRT, you could have said my interest was 5250 and I borrowed 350. I don't know my rate, but my time was really 10 days out of 365 days. <clears throat> kind of like we did the three months out of the 12 months before we could have done that. So this all uh, would have been here, 5250 divided by the 350 and divided by 10 divided by 365 is um, 0.027. So I'm going to show you in Desmos how you could do it here. So 52.50 divided by 3.50 times 0.027. Um, did I type something right? 5.5. Maybe did I use 0.3 before? No. Oh, I know. Oh, geez. Can I say 350 times 0.027? <clears throat> if you do your actual division 397, use more decimal places here, it gets it gets right here. Now, if you multiply that by 100, 5.475 times 100, there you get the same interest rate, 547.5. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any questions on that so far? So, what do we think about that as an investment? Is that a good deal? Huh? It's not good for taking out a lot. Not good at all. Not good at all. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> that being said, if you can avoid the payday loans, <clears throat> um, you know, if you buy a used car, when you buy it, you have to also think about part of the cost is, you know, setting aside some money every paycheck um, to pay for when you have to fix things. Because a used car, you're going to have to fix things. And depending on how old the used car is, you're going to have to fix more things or less things, right? And then there's always maintenance, things that you have to do to the car, like oil changes to take good care of it. They seem like you don't want to spend money on that, but really you do need to spend money on that because that's what keeps your car running well. And rotating the tires and getting new tires, all those things. So, okay, so let's <clears throat> take a minute and flip the page here. And we're going to look at another set of questions. It says, another example of simple interest is a certificate of deposit or called a CD. They're more commonly known. <clears throat> this is an investment where you agree to leave your deposit um, for an, a fixed amount of time. It's like a savings account, but you're telling the bank or a company wherever you buy the CD from 
that you're going to say, if you buy a five-year CD, you're going to say, I'm giving you this money and I'm not going to touch it for five years or uh, 10 years. So the longer you're willing to not touch your money, you cannot take it out. The longer you're willing to not touch your money, the higher the interest rate they're going to pay you. And it's a fixed um, interest rate. <clears throat> Excuse me, fixed, meaning they're going to pay that no matter what. So it's a pretty safe investment. They're guaranteeing that they're, you're gonna get this interest rate. Um, and we're going to use, it says the APY column. So we're going to use this column, <clears throat> okay? And here are the minimum deposits that you'd have to put in those um, for one year. So the, if you're willing to put it in for five years, you would get an even better rate than just that. Okay, so let's look at the first question. It says for a $2,500 <clears throat> investment, how much more interest would you earn if you chose Live Oak Bank over Sally May? So we want to figure out the interest for both and we're going to compare them here. So what did you guys come up with here? <clears throat> um, for the Live Oak Bank, I got that the interest was seventy-one twenty-five. Seventy-one twenty-five. <clears throat> what about you, Carter? I got seventy one twenty five for the the oak, and then for Sally May, I got sixty eight seventy five. Um, do you agree with that, Stephen? Yeah. Okay, so you want to give me those again? <laughs> um, live oak. Is seventy one twenty five, and then Sally May is sixty eight seventy five, and these are seventy one dollars, right? Yeah, seventy one dollars. <laughs> okay, so it looks like Live Oak, you were seeing a little bit more, and then number seven says if your goal was to earn eighty dollars in interest on your twenty five hundred dollar investment, what interest rate would you need to find? So this time, do you guys need more time or did you work on this one already? I went through that one a little bit. Okay. Uh, I didn't get that. Okay, go ahead and take a minute to do that. Yeah. So we want to earn $80 in interest. So we know that is here. And we started with that 2,500 because it says, what interest would you need to earn? What rate? And we're still just leaving it for one year, right? So we're selling for the rate. So we're going to take 80 divided by 2,500. And... What did everybody get? Um, I got 0 0.032. <laughs> That's what I had. Carter, did you get that too? Yeah. So we would need to get 3.2% interest, right, to earn $80 in that year. Okay, so number eight says, if you've got the interest rate, um, that Synchrony Bank was offering for a different length of time. So Synchrony Bank's offering 2.8. How long would you need to invest in order to get the $80 you have your heart set on? So now we know we're still wanting to get the $80. The $2,500 we're starting with. This time, um, we're going to use the synchrony interest, so that'd be 0 0.028, but we don't know how long we're going to have to leave it there to be able to get that interest. So 
So we have 80 divided by 2,500, but we also have to divide by 0.028. How do we come up with? Um, I got 1.14. Are we in agreement with that 1.14 meters? Just bad. <clears throat> so I don't, I don't know how CDs work that well. I don't know if you can just leave them longer or if you have to take them out after the next year and then decide to leave them for another set amount of time. So that's, does anybody else have that information? Does anybody know any about CDs? Nope. Me either, not, <clears throat> not that much. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see, CDs don't return a ton of interest. What they do offer is a guaranteed return. Suppose that you also have the opportunity to invest that 2,500 in a business venture that promised 12.5% return in one year unless the company failed to turn a profit, in which case you would get nothing at all back. Calculate the amount of interest you'd get and discuss whether you'd prefer the risky investment over the CD. I have a question real quick, so. Sure. How'd you, how'd you get the 1.14? So I'm getting like 0 0.00896 when I do my did you do, does it look like this in your Desmos right here, what you're typing in? 80 divided by 2,500 divided by 0. 0.028? Oh, I was just doing it in like my calculator. Oh, <clears throat> so um, your calculator might be looking like 80 times 2,500 or 80 divided by, so I'm going to share my Desmos screen for a minute. And that's a good question because I think sometimes the way students type it in, they type 80 divided by 2,500. Mm -hmm. And then they say times 0 0.028. Is that what you got? 0 0.000896? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so here you're saying divide by 2,500 and then multiply by 0.28. But notice up here in this line, this is not the one. We want this one. We want the 0.028 to be in the bottom, just like we have it in our picture. Okay. So I'm going to um, show you in my paper how you'll need to type it in. Do you have a graphing calculator, Carter? Yeah. Okay. So in a graphing calculator, you're going to type it like this, 80 divided by, and then you're going to put this whole thing in parentheses. So it knows to do this multiplication. This has to stay in the denominator. Okay. Yeah. And that, see if that helps you get the 1.14. Yeah, I got that. Yay. <clears throat> you fixed it. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. And that probably helps somebody at home because I guarantee other students have been getting, if they're using kind of a similar calculator. So let's look at the risky one here. So let's say we invested at 2,500 and we're earning 0.125 for that one year. If they turned a profit, right? Because if the company, it's kind of like dividends. Um, if you invest money into a stock, which we're going to learn about in lesson three, five, <clears throat> um, then uh, we're going to learn more about stacks, like what you guys did in lesson in unit two. We're going to learn um, specific stuff about stacks. But anyway, um, there's some stacks that they pay called a dividend. And sometimes they pay it quarterly. Sometimes they pay it once a year. But <clears throat> they pay you as long as they're making money. They can't. Um, they would um, pay you money for owning their stack.
So what, how much will we earn here? Um, I got 312.5. So 312.50, yes, yeah, sweet Mula. So what would you guys decide? Would you go with the risky one? You're hoping the company makes money and you get that 312.50 or you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go with this safe one that I'm pretty confident I'm gonna um, make some money. Me personally, I worry over things too much. So I would just go with the safe one. I'd be like, yeah. I know I'm gonna make some money. Yeah, same. There you go. I wouldn't risk anything like that. <laughs> oh, no. Because you wouldn't make it. But the good thing is you still have your 2,500, right? You just wouldn't have, you, they can't take, they can't take money away from you, but you just wouldn't have made any money. <clears throat> so right. yeah, that's a hard one. So um, I'll let you boys decide, do you want to stay on? Oh, I, I need to post, I need to point something out. The um, lesson check, I didn't point it out. It was on page, page 259, question number six. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, page 259, question number six was the lesson check. And the answer that we came up with is 2020. And you don't need the dollar sign. I don't think, I can't remember if I have it on there or not. So it's 2020 for the lesson check for 3 1. Um, so, yep, I'm going to let you boys, if you want to stay on and work on the worksheet, or if you want to work on the worksheet on your own and see you back on Tuesday, it's totally up to you. I can work on the worksheet here. Okay. follow up with a question on which one c yes c and write an equation to model the future value of the loan for an unknown amount of years to your relative so am i just like for the letters that i know mm -hmm. am i just filling mm -hmm. those in and then there's yeah. two that i would leave blank mm -hmm. yeah well there's going to be two that are blank. Well, I think so, right? Because you you don't know the future value like a, right. and then you don't know the time. Right. <clears throat> um. Yes, for an unknown amount of years to your relative. Yes. Okay. Yep. I did that, and then for D, it asks how I know that it's a linear equation. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Mm, that's a good question. <clears throat> how did we decide if something was linear or exponential back in unit two? Um, if it was repeat addition or multiplication. Okay, so are we, in this one, are we repeat adding or repeat multiplying? um adding right so that's how we know it's linear we're okay. repeat adding this piece right here right the prt yep so for the folks at home make sure you're paying attention that you are loaning your family two thousand dollars and you said you'd charge them 5.6 percent interest and you're going to calculate how much interest they would pay you after 10 years um and what if you said nope i need you to pay me in five years so both, that's where we're at
Stephen, how did she say to figure out uh, B? Um, for B, if you did the the first one, it's basically just doing the same thing again, but instead of ten years, it's five. Oh wait, no, for for D. Oh, for D.